hello saints and future saints I pray everybody out there is doing well and uh, thanks for studying God's Word with me today my hope is that we can both learn together growing in Christ Jesus spiritually as we get closer to the day as Paul calls it so many times in his writings and what is the day you ask well if you've been following our studies here on my channel you'll discover that the day is a term that Paul uses to describe the rapture, our catching away, the harpazo, and our judgment seat of Christ Jesus. The day is significant for the body of Christ. That's us, folks. And that day, Paul uses as well as the day for them, them being those who will be going through Daniel's 70th week, uh, so anyway, moving along with our study, you wouldn't believe how many emails and messages I get from all over the world, some asking questions, some uh, sharing testimonies, but the ones that really make me happy are the messages, the people who tell me that these teachings on right division and dispensations have finally opened their eyes to the truth. They finally understand God's Word like never before. And I love reading those emails because I too was a person who after rightly dividing and after learning dispensations, finally it all made sense to me. God's Word was all of a sudden clear as crystal. It, it all, uh, you know, and it's all to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ever since I got saved over 33 years ago now, I was taught and I was taught uh, something, our subject for today's study, I was taught that, uh, that uh, the church is coming back with Christ at the second coming. And I was taught that by some of the biggest names in today's preacher uh, world. And if I told you who they were, you'd all know exactly who I'm speaking about. And I'm sure you've heard them teaching. They're all over the radio, all over TV, all over YouTube. And one of the, 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 the most common teach, teach, teachings sorry, that we're going to talk about is uh, these famous preachers. They all have the same thread, the same common teaching. And like I said, that we, the saints, will come back with our Lord Jesus at the second coming. And I made the mistake of just taking their word for it and we need to talk about this teaching today saints because it's very important that we all understand what God's Word says and not what man teaches it says okay now after all the reason why I believe these these preachers and these teachers uh, you know I was learning from them I was young I had just started out uh, in the Lord and you know they all went to Bible college some of them have doctor before their names. Some of them have PhD. Some of them have doctor. You know, some have written hundreds, even thousands of books. It's like I said, some of them have TV shows and radio shows. So why should I question their integrity uh, considering all these things? Why should I question their teachings, right? You see, saints, this is the, is the same mistake 90 nine percent of Christendom is making right now today the mistake of listening to man instead of listening to God's Word because the sad truth is the average Christian their average life it, it goes something like this they go to church on Sunday they listen to a man tell them what the Bible says and they take it all as being true then comes Monday work 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 financial problems, family problems, school problems, the world's problems, all these problems consume and overwhelm that Christian all week long. Then on the next Sunday, they go back to the same church building to listen to the same man, tell them what the Bible says, and the process repeats over and over and over again. And this is the typical Christian in today's world. Most never study the Bible on their own. Even worse than this, friends, are people who play preacher on YouTube and have no business teaching God's Word in the first place. I'm talking about people who 
put a mask on for the camera uh, but live an opposite life when the camera stops rolling those people so you know so-called teachers and preachers who show their bad fruit right on camera then they profess to have all the good fruit of being in Christ Jesus watch out for these people saints pay attention to their actions both on camera and off camera if you can pay attention to everything they say if their actions off camera don't jive with the words they speak on camera then that's an alarm to pay attention as the saying goes the devil is in the details and unless you compare everything they say with the Word of God you'll never know the truth especially the truth if you're being told the truth by somebody who is genuinely in Christ or if someone is just playing in Christ it's important to study God's Word it's your protection it's your armor against all the lies out there Paul tells us to have our armor on at all times our sword of truth God's Word you know the shield of faith the helmet of salvation the belt of truth and so on read Ephesians 6 and see how important these tools are for us today especially in these deceptive times that we're living in right now folks they say one thing on video but live an entirely different thing in their own lives these are the ones you need to fear the most and Paul talks a lot about these people he says to watch out for them false teachers that look and act like the real thing but are counterfeits they you know speaking smooth sounding words that make you feel good but at its root these smooth words are cancers that will destroy your relationship with God over time and the product of all this leads Christians to believe things that God never intended them to believe uh, the Christian starts to believe myths and fables instead of learning what the Bible really says now if you're like most Christians you probably believe the same myths the same false teachings and you never realized it before well let me give you some examples of these myths and these false teachings things that are not found in the Bible teachings and beliefs that come from listening to uh, so-called preachers instead of learning the truth from the Bible yourself now I bet like so many other Christians you believe first that Peter and Paul both taught the same gospel the second thing is that we are the bride and soon Jesus the groom is coming to get his bride in the rapture the third thing is that Matthew 24 is a picture of the rapture specifically the part where it says two in the field one will be taken one will be left you know I bet you believe the one taken is a picture of the rapture the fourth thing is you believe that first there must be a falling away within the church before the seven-year tribulation period can begin the fifth you believe that when Christ Jesus returns the church will be with him dressed in white riding white horses to rule and reign with Christ on earth the sixth thing you probably believe is baptism is necessary uh, a part to seal your salvation with Christ seventh you believe that after the rapture takes place a person will have a second chance to get saved during the tribulation period the eighth thing you, you probably believe is that the four Gospels are part of the New Testament just because there's a piece of paper right before Matthew that says New Testament on it the ninth thing you probably believe is that the church has become Israel and both are the same thing the tenth thing you probably believe and I bet you think you've been born again because of what Jesus said he ye must be born again so are you born again or are you saved in the body of Christ do you even know the difference of being born again and being saved when Jesus said ye must be born again the key to understanding this verse is the word ye find out who ye is here the words thee and thou and ye and so on all have very specific and particular meaning and it's important you understand what they mean with with close inspection you'll discover that the word ye that Jesus uses here relates to the nation of Israel 
The word thee or thou is singular. The word ye is plural, meaning all of you as a group. A nation must be born again. So perhaps I'll do a study on this term being born again in another video, but today we're going to talk about uh, who's coming back with Christ at the second coming. I can go on and on and on. Uh, everything I've just listed, all these myths, 1 through 10, is not in the Bible, folks. And most of you probably never knew that because most people do not study the way they should be studying. The most dangerous thing you can do as a Christian is just take another man's word for it instead of researching and studying those things out for yourself. The result happens to be confusion and false teaching and depression and so on. I can't tell you how my blood boils when I hear a famous preacher or somebody with supposedly is known to have integrity and is known to know their Bible. They say that Christ is coming for his bride soon and will be coming back with Christ at the second coming riding on white horses. Folks, the Bible says no such thing. So why are these preachers saying these things? They're lost. That's why. And you've been duped. Duped into trusting man to feed you instead of learning how to feed yourself by studying God's word on your own. You need to learn how to feed yourself, saints. And the way you do that is by studying on your own. Okay, so and that goes for me too. All right, I'm not excluded in this. Don't believe everything that I say. I want you to search out the scriptures, compare what I say to God's word, what he says. Don't take my word for it, please. Study to show yourselves approved. All right, now we need to get away from what man says and we need to go back to what the Bible says to find these answers. God cannot lie, he does not lie. He's not the author of confusion, so we need to study his word. And you know, no wonder why Paul told Timothy in, in, in Timothy 2:15, he says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Now, I bet you that most of you watching this video believe that we're coming back to the earth with Jesus at the second coming, but is that what? God's word really says or have we've been taking man's word for it and just accepting it because it sounds so cool to be coming back in power with Lord Jesus I admit it sounds really wonderful to be coming back with all that power with all that glory riding on beautiful horses I, I admit it it sounds great but what does God's word tell us we're gonna find out in this video first of all I need to stress the importance of right division and knowing dispensations. I have all kinds of videos on here on this channel all about the seven dispensations. I highly suggest you watch those videos before anything else. Okay, We need to know how the Bible is written, how it's divided according to God's administrations and so on. Now if you don't know what dispensations are, again if you don't know what the right division is all about. You're wide open to believing false teaching and you're you're a marked victim for all the false teachers out there. You know, they love people like you, those who take their words for it instead of searching out the truth in the Bible. OK, if you don't understand dispensations, if you don't understand right division, then with all due respect, you cannot and do not understand God's word. There's a very high probability that you're believing many lies and you're caught up in some form of false teaching. So our goal here in this video is to rightly divide God's word and we'll find out who's with Jesus when he returns at the second coming. The Apostle John clearly identified Jesus' literal, physical, and visible return to the earth, concluding the seven year tribulation correctly known as Daniel's 70th week in Revelation chapter 19. In Revelation 19, 11 to 14, we read, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a, a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, 
and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, did you hear that? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now notice in verse 14, it's assumed to be a reference to the members of the church, the body of Christ. After all, it's believed that these individuals wearing white and clean, uh, fine linen are Christians. Okay, Verses 7 through 9 lead many to conclude in Revelations 19 through 7 and 9, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the, of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arraigned in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, while Revelation 9.14 is often assumed to be referring to us, the body, the church, uh, the body of Christ, Jesus Christ provides the correct interpretation regarding who accompanies him at the second coming. Look at Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his, what? With his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his his works in mark 8 38 whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels luke 9 26 for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. The creatures here described that accompany Jesus Christ are angels, not us, not the body of Christ. Angels wear white clothing, okay? We see that in the Old Testament all over the place. Now in Mark 16, 5, and entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrightened. Now we know that was an angel, right? Acts 1.10 And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by, stood by them in white apparel. Now, are we going to believe the words of our Lord Jesus Christ? when he says that angels will accompany him or are we going to continue to believe church tradition that the body of Christ will accompany Jesus at his second coming which one are we going to believe in fact the book of Jude identifies that those returning to the earth with Jesus as a, at the second coming are angels Jude writes in verse 14 and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Now, could Enoch have been prophesying about the body of Christ five thousand years ago? Could he have, now listen to that question, could Enoch have been prophesying about the body of Christ specifically? If you know right division and you know dispensations, the answer is no. The reason why the answer is no is because God kept the body of Christ a secret from the Old Testament prophets. It was a secret given to Paul when Paul came around. In Romans 16, 25 verse, uh, to 26, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest 
and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Alright? Ephesians 3, 1-6 For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensations of the grace of God which is given to me, to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. In Colossians 1, 24-27, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of all of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known that is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now obviously Jude and Enoch are referring to the angels. The word saints here simply means the holy ones. In, in, in translation it means holy ones and this term is not exclusive of humans. In, in Deuteronomy 33 too, which Moses wrote about Christ's second coming, angels are called saints. In Revelation 19 we have two sets of creatures wearing white and they cannot be confused with each other and they cannot be confused with us either. In Revelation 19 verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And as we've already proven from the scriptures, the Lord Jesus identifies those individuals following him as angels. Either we believe him or we don't. Angels are God's armies in heaven. This is never the language used in the Bible to describe Christians. Nowhere in the Bible does it say Christians are armies or are, are militaristic beings. Verses 7 through 8 again, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in, arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. These creatures here collectively are called she, okay, are believers, but they're on the earth. And they are identified as the Lamb's wife. Jesus Christ here, of course, is the Lamb, and the context is him returning for the nation of Israel. And we know the nation of Israel is the woman. The lamb's wife. It's Israel's believing remnant. The little flock. The messianic Jews. Who physically survived the seven year tribulation period. Daniel's 70th week. These Jews will be looking up into the clouds. To see Jesus returning. We see that in Zechariah 12. 10. Zechariah 13. 6. Luke 21. 25. Revelation 1. 7. Uh, verses 7 and 8 verses 14 of Revelation 19 are not to be combined as if they refer to the same group of individuals. So how do we, the body of Christ, relate to the second coming, you ask? The Apostle Paul in his epistles, Romans through Philemon, never expi explicitly state that we come back to the earth. I prefer to believe the Holy Spirit's words through Paul than to believe the words of any preacher or teacher any day. And it's become clear through studying God's word of my own that I've been fed lies over and over again throughout the years to believe things that just aren't true. The body of Christ doesn't come back. 
with Jesus at the second coming. If we were coming with Christ, Paul would have most certainly told us all about it, but he doesn't. All Paul tells us is that we'll be caught up at the Harpazo prior to Daniel's 70th week. He says nothing about us coming back with Christ. Paul and all the, uh, all the members of the body of Christ are saved unto heaven, not the earth. We have glorified bodies, eternal in the heavens. The reason why our bodies are changed at the rapture is because a body, the flesh, cannot inherit the king, uh, heavenly uh, places. So our bodies have to be glorified. In 2 Corinthians 5.1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. In Ephesians 1, 20-23, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sent him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Look at verse 22. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave to be the head over all things to the church. What does it say next in 23? Which is his body? Does it say bride? No. It says body. We are the body of Christ. We are his body. The bride, the woman, is the nation of Israel. And I've done a study on that. You can find a video, another video on my channel, uh, Who is the Bride? All right. Now, to have us, uh, we're going to be ruling uh, over the heavenlies, and the nation of Israel will be ruling on the earth. And that means that there would be no one, uh, if, if we're coming back with Jesus Christ in the second coming, then that means there is no one to be ruling in heaven in the places of the fallen angels that God removes. In Revelation 12, 7 to 10, remember, Satan and his angels are thrown down from heaven on, onto the earth. This creates a vacuum in heaven. And this vacuum, these empty places that, that are created when the angels are kicked out of heaven, the fallen angels, will be filled by the body of Christ, by us. We're, we're going to be taking over these powers these principalities, these governments, uh, we're going to be ruling from heaven in Christ, while the nation of Israel will be ruling over the earth, in the earthly kingdom. Despite what church tradition says, we, the church, the body of Christ, have no relation whatsoever to Christ's second coming. Surprise, surprise. The things that happen when you read God's word it's very dangerous to confuse the nation of Israel with the church, the body of Christ. Very dangerous to mix the two. And by not knowing dispensations and by not rightly dividing, that's what happens. People mix the body of Christ with the nation of Israel. They make them one. And then everything gets flipped upside down. We are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth that's what paul tells timothy in second timothy 2 15. if we're to understand the bible we must separate dispensations from each other we can't combine passages that have no relation to one another mixing israel's verses and our verses and programs all you know together in this huge blender and what comes out of this blender is a false teaching confusion and it only leads to heartaches and contention and this is why Christendom is in such a doctrinal mess today and it's why Christians today believe things like we're the bride and we're coming back on horses with Christ Jesus at the rapture which could happen in any moment and before the seven-year tribulation begins Daniel 70th week God will secretly and instantly remove us from the earth, all of us, all the people who have trusted him exclusively, who trust in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and believe and trust the gospel. 
Those who've relied completely on Christ dying for their sins, his burial, his resurrection, for their justification and sanctification, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Paul described the rapture in two main passages. If we look at 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 58, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Again, there's that glorified body needed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immorality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immorality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4.13-18 to 18, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now if God will one day remove us, the body of Christ, from the earth, wouldn't it make sense for us to return to the earth at his second coming? Of course not. It makes no sense. We're God's heavenly people. Our rightful place is in the heavenlies. Israel is God's earthly people, which is why Israel will inherit the earthly kingdom. We, as members of the church, the body of Christ, have no reason to come back to the earth with Jesus Christ at the second coming. We have a heavenly hope, not an earthly one. At his second coming, Jesus Christ will, will be coming for Israel. We have no relation to that event whatsoever. Jesus Christ's second coming is to rescue Israel from the Antichrist and her enemies. When we understand dispensational Bible study, we see that we have nothing to do with God's dealings with Israel. Beginning at the rapture and down through the ages of eternity, uh, the eternity's future, we, the body of Christ, will function in heaven, will have no need to ever return to the earth. Earth will be Israel's territory. Again, Israel is God's earthly people. You can read about that in Exodus 19, 5 through 6, Psalm 37, chapter uh, verse 9, Matthew 5, 5, Revelation 5, 10. We, the church, the body, are his heavenly people. And you read that in 2 Corinthians 5, 1, Ephesians 1, 3, Ephesians 2, verses 6 and 7, and 2 Timothy 4, 18. Now, in conclusion... Jesus Christ clearly identified these creatures returning with him at the second coming as angels. These are the creatures in white of Revelation 9.14. Israel's believing remnant will be on the earth at Christ's second coming, and they will watch him come back in the clouds in Zechariah 12.10, Zechariah 13.6, Luke 21.25-28, and Revelation 1.7. We see that. These angels were, are going to gather Israel's believing remnant on the earth. And we read about that in Matthew 24, verse 30 to 31. Since Revelation 19:14 calls them the armies of heaven, these angels obviously are going to be fighting Satan's armies on the earth when Jesus Christ returns. This army of angels uh, that, that comes back with Jesus, they have two jobs, all right? And I've made a video, several videos actually, all about this. Uh, first, 
they're going to gather the tares, the unbelievers. The angels are going to gather all the unbelievers and destroy them. They'll bring them to where the eagles gather. These are vultures who feed on death. These are the ones removed, as in two in the field, one taken, one left. Uh, the ones taken are the tares. Unbelievers are killed and destroyed, just like those in Noah's day. They were all taken away and drowned. Okay, I did a few videos again on the, on the second coming. Uh, one of them is, is Matthew 24, the ones taken, uh, the rapture, and so on. Part two is wheat and tares, ones left behind, the rapture, the parable of the dragnet, the ten virgins parable, uh, who are those virgins, and so on. So take a look at those videos and you'll see what happens at the second coming. And even more proof that God's angels will be the ones in action during that time. The second thing the angels will do is gather the elect from the four winds and usher them into the promised earthly kingdom. Again, if you watch those videos that I've listed, uh, you'll get some insight into what's going to take place when our Lord Jesus comes back at the second coming right after Daniel's 70th week. So, and I have those videos all throughout my channel. It's important you watch the videos on dispensation, uh, the seven dispensations. It's important you watch the videos on the parables. Again, the wheat and tares, uh, the parable, the dragnets, uh, the virgins, who are they? In all those, I have very uh, select videos on my channel that describe the second coming and Matthew 24 specifically. So I pray that this video has edified you saints. Peace, grace, love in Christ Jesus be with all of you and I'll see you on my next video.